Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Sorry. Good morning, everyone. It's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. What you're looking at here is um, a pile of chopped up copper clay, and this is about one bar's worth. These two ounce packages come in four bars, and I use that's usually how I gauge how much I use. This is, let's see, yeah, this is the new copper from last year. And I believe it was last year. And it's much redder than the previous the previous copper. And I haven't used it very much, so I'm not really sure whether I like the color yet or not. This is the uh this is what I'm gonna do today. Is this frame with a little printed picture. That's the one I'm gonna use. And uh then it's got clear embossing powder to protect the picture. So I'm not going to do this actual pendant, but I'm going to do a little bit bigger pendant. I'm going to use this picture, and instead of having the extra bit at the top up here, I'm going to put holes in the bezel down at the bottom and have some little bits, some little charms or something dangling down from the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. I would just print this off on my printer, and I like to leave like an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, something like that. And that's going to go in between the two pieces of your bezel so that it holds the, f the picture in. So, a piece of glass, tissue blade, that's what I chopped up all the clay with. And the reason I did that today is because this particular batch of copper, of uh, clay, is kind of dry. So it just makes it easier to knead up. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get this kneaded up and roll it out. I've just got a acrylic, acrylic roller that I'm going to use to roll this out. I do have a pasta machine, but I'm not going to get it all out just for this one little project. And I actually did do a 30-minute tutorial yesterday. And it was a hot mess, so I'm not going to upload it. But I did order me a new battery and a new memory card for my camera. So, <laughs> by the end of the week, hopefully, I can film more than six minutes at a time. Because, as you can see, I'm already at three minutes. So, I'm going to need this up, and I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> Here I've got it rolled out to like, you know, sixteenth of an inch or so. And that should be plenty thick enough because it's going to actually be two layers. So, uh, about the tutorial that I said I did yesterday, I will be redoing the tutorial, so have no fear, you're not going to miss anything. Alright. Cooperative clay this morning. Okay. So as you can see, I just made this clay a little bit bigger than my printed out piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out. Leaving a good bit. I'm going to straighten the picture actually a little bit more. Leaving a good sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch of clay outside of your picture. That's so that when we put the frame on top, it'll have clay to stick to. Because other than that, that's the only thing that's going to hold your picture down. I'm not going to put anything under the picture or anything like that. I could put a thin layer of liquid sculpey underneath it, but it will change the it'll change the color of the picture just a little bit if I do that. And so I'm not going to do that on this one. All right. So 
the tissue blade, the good thing about it, and I'm not going to be able to show you while I'm holding the camera, is that it, it will curve. And I can curve this blade to match this arch when I'm cutting. So I'm going to cut that and I'll come right back. Okay, there we go. So another way to do this, if you don't have a tissue blade, is just use something and scribe a line on the outside of your printed image. And then when you peel it off, you'll be able to cut away from it just a little bit. So you can do it that way too. <coughs> Sorry y'all, my voice is just crazy this morning. So now what I'm going to do is take my print off and I'm going to roll out some more clay and I'll lay this down on top of the clay, just barely lay it down lightly and I'll scribe around it and I'll cut another piece just like this. So. Okay, so here we are with my two pieces. I'm going to cut the center of this piece out and I'm going to leave like a quarter of an inch frame all the way around except for I'm going to leave it a little thicker at the bottom because I'm going to poke those holes so I want it to have a little more stability across the bottom so I'm going to at least scribe that out and then I'll come back and show you okay there you can see my scribed line on there now what I'll probably do is I'll probably okay the first thing I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to have to make a bale to hang this piece from and since I'm working with copper clay, I'm just going to use some copper wire. This is like a 20 gauge copper wire. And I'll just have some snips. These actually were my grandfather's. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And I'm going to take about the center of this arch. And I'm going to clamp it up here high, just past where your round nose starts. And I'm going to bend them straight down. And across the ends, hold your pliers tight, close, so that it holds your wire. And then I'm going to bend them back on themselves. Like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off. I'm going to flip it over. Sorry about that. And do the same thing again. And empty my memory card again. Okay. I'll tell you all right now. Between the battery and the memory card on my camera, I'm about to give up. Because, of course, once you get the battery charged and then have to empty the memory card twice... It's drained your battery down again. So this will probably be the last tutorial until next week after my memory card and battery come. Then I'll have two of everything and hopefully this won't keep happening. Because it makes me lose my train of thought. Which is the worst part. Alright, so I've got, I've done this twice, alright, and then I've flipped it over again. And then pull it down again. Now you're going to have three loops. Move this down to your bottom, cross them again to where they're just straight out like that. And then what you're going to do is twist, twist, twist. Three little twists. Alright. Then what I'm going to do, I've got this three loops and three twists then I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the end and I'm just gonna twist to make a little loop and what this is gonna do this is gonna help anchor this into your piece so in order for it to come out literally your piece would have to break So there, I thought this music paper would help it, help you to be able to see it better. I think I made it worse. 
there you go that's what it'll look like and you want to look from the end and kind of make sure it's relatively flat which it is all right so what i'm going to do is for me i'm just going to guesstimate <laughs> where the center of that is something like that and you want to make sure that it's far enough away from the edge that you're not going to see the tips poking out and they're not going to loosen your, your strength all right and then usually what I'll do is I'll just mash that down into the clay like that now that's going to be sandwiched in between your backing and your frame so while my battery was charging. You can't leave clay. First of all, if you don't have a glass tile or, or a, a ceramic tile, either one, you can always bake on a cookie sheet, on a piece of foil, a piece of parchment paper. There's, there's several different things you can bake on. But if you're working with clay and you have to leave it set anytime at all, do not leave it on your desk or painted surface, anything like that, because it will not only ruin the surface of your uh, your desk or whatever, the clay will start to deteriorate, so all your work will have gone to waste. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to cut along my score line here, and after I do that, I'll come back. Okay, I decided instead of coming back, I'll try to do this. My main problem is, hold on, let me just do that. turn my light on up here. My main problem is going to be that my hand is going to be in your way. So I apologize ahead of time for that. And I need to get this where I can see my own score line, which is not going to happen. So I'll just make myself a little guide. There we go. There we go. Not the middle part. I don't need. Okay. Now, I've got the picture on the clay. I'm actually going to flip this over to hide the score lines where I went inside or outside of, whichever case may be. Now, let me pick this up and see what I think. All right. Lined up a little better. What I don't want is any of the white showing around the picture if I can help it. Right now I'm just mashing around the outside edge a little bit. Alright, there we go. Now, I've got a metal knitting needle that I'm sure you've seen before. And I pick these up anytime I find them, these little metal knitting needles. You can also use any of your paintbrush, you know, whatever you've got. A toothpick. You can use a toothpick. And just decide what kind of design. And your design mainly is going to be to help fuse. It's going to be to help fuse these two layers of clay 
together so that they hold the picture in there nicely. So I'm going to start out with emptying my memory card again evidently is what I'm going to start out with. So once again, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry for my ranting. Every time I have to take it off the tripod to empty the <laughs> memory card. Just a bit distracting. So I'm just going to do a, a design of, of some ribbing or whatever you want to call it. Make it look like rays coming out of the center of the picture or something anyway. And I'm sorry for my silence. <laughs> it's like when you were a kid and had to stick your tongue out when you were using the scissors. <laughs> Game of concentration. And I was going to say before when I was talking about baking on a glass tile, also on your desk when you're when you're working with the clay, put down some wax paper, or some foil or something if you don't have a glass mat. I'm not I'm not sure about the stability of your cutting mat with clay on it. But that's a possibility. Alright. Now you can see right here my frame has come up just the least little bit. There we go. Knock that back down. Alright. There we go. That's a kind of interesting frame there so to speak. Now what I want is I want holes down here across the bottom and what I'm thinking what I'm thinking is I want one in the center and then two on either side so I want five holes across there. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the detail, wondering if there's something else I might do around the edge there. I'll look about that in just a minute. <coughs> so, let's do that. Now you don't want your hole too far up, because you have to think about the width of your jump ring that you're going to be putting through there. So... The center may be too far in if you've got smaller jump rings. But what you want to do here is make sure, of course, that you go through both the layers of clay and that you're not necessarily hitting your paper. And what I do is I, I put the tip of the needle in and then I wiggle it around a little bit widen out the hole just a tiny bit. Like that. And there we go. Four nice little holes. Now what I'm actually going to do is everywhere I put one of these little lines right here, I'm going to roll it around the corner like that. And that should help hold the two frames together. And like I said, I could put liquid Sculpey between, which is what normally I probably would do. But it will leach into the photo and change the color on the photo will change the colors like of their gown it would make the background a little darker and I just don't I don't want that so I'm not gonna do this on this piece but like if I was putting a stone behind it or something like that it would be fine I mean if I was putting a stone in the middle it would be fine because you wouldn't see it and the liquid sculpey is just like almost like 
clay glue, I guess. It's a transparent, sorry, I'm off camera. It's a transparent liquid clay. Lots and lots of uses, and I'll definitely do some tutorials on that. So there we go. That's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to do this, and then it's going to go in the oven. And after that, I will come back again. And now, now that I've thought about it, I may round the inside edges as well. I'll try that and see what it looks like. And then I'll be right back. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, it's been out of the oven about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And it's cool enough to touch. It's still warm. But it's not warm enough to melt this embossing powder. So, I've just got a metal spatula. You can use uh, a spoon or... I guess anything to spoon it on here. And yeah, this is probably the most difficult... <laughs> this is probably the most difficult part. Is just getting it in here and a little bit level. Maybe one more spoon. And trying not to get it everywhere you don't want it. Like that. <laughs> uh, do as I say, not as I do, as my dad would say. And sorry, there I go being quiet again. Didn't mean to. Darn the concentration. Okay. Now, of course, it will level itself out in the oven to a degree. But you want it to really go to the edge of the bezel and uh, help hold that photograph, I mean that print, in there. Because the only thing holding it down, of course, is the edge of the is the edge of the frame. All right, there we go, and I will stick this back in the oven. On the exact same setting as I had when I baked it. for uh, 20 minutes because you're not using anything to stick the embossing powder to. In other words, there's no Versamark or anything under it. <coughs> there's no really way to use your heat tool to to melt it. So I don't have any choice but to stick it back in the oven. And it tends to make it lay flatter anyway. It lets it kind of melt and flow. But the important thing is to get it level basically in the oven so there's <laughs> there will be my tricky part so I'm gonna bake this and then I'll come back and show you just the last little I'll show you what it looks like and possibly antique it so I'll be back okay I'm gonna go and put one more coat of um, embossing powder and as you can see I went back and put just a tiny tiny bit of some iridescent microfine glitter. So I'm going to fill this up one more time and bake it again. Alright. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did last time, and spread it out. This time I don't have to be as careful about getting it close to the edge and stuff like that because the page is, uh, the picture is already sealed down.
basically just want enough to hold the glitter on there so that the glitter is suspended in the embossing powder okay now if anybody out there has done any polymer clay with um, glossy accents or crackle accents leave me a comment down there because I just got my glossy accents and I have the triple thick glaze which is really really similar um, from what I understand the triple thick stays a little bit more flexible after it's dry than the glossy accents does but the triple thick will react with the clay and make it mushy and it so I don't know whether you can use the glossy accents or crackle accents on the clay or not but I'm gonna do an experiment eventually because I want to try the crackle accents I think it would be so amazing if it would work so stay tuned like I said if you ever tried it leave me a comment all right I'm gonna throw this back in the oven one more time and as if y'all aren't tired enough to see it I'm sure but <laughs> then then I'll come back and show it okay here we go and another trial and error occasionally the uh, oh sorry about that the embossing powder will leach through the paper so in hindsight I would have been better off just putting the liquid sculpey <clears throat> underneath the print because it wound up with the same effect anyway and also the clear glitter unless you're in the sunlight really is just almost invisible I don't even think I can get you a shot of it huh. anyway and since I can't leave well enough alone <laughs> I almost never use the clay just like it turns out. I've rubbed on a little copper uh, Pearlex powder and a little bronze Pearlex powder. The super copper and the super bronze. And just with my finger just rubbed a little on there. And I did that before I'm going to put the clear sealer, just a little satin sealer on top of the frame before I antique it. So that's it. That's basically the uh, tutorial. It's a shame that that spot right there. Well, it's a shame the rest of it darkened is what, what the shame is. Because it's just not as visible as it is in the clear area. But that's part of the charm, part of what it makes it look antique. So I don't know yet what I'm going to hang from I'll probably make some little charms or something and I'll come back and do a video of the finished piece later but that's basically the tutorial um, I will redo the tutorial that I filmed yesterday that just really I was so irritated by the end of the video it was it, it y'all wouldn't have enjoyed me <laughs> so uh, the memory cards are supposed to be coming I think day after tomorrow maybe tomorrow and then by the first of next week I should have the battery which the battery is not as important but and hopefully I can redo that video so all right thanks a lot y'all thank you for watching I'll see you next time holler at you later bye now